Welcome to BSW's Tech Dive. Tech, tech Dive. The birds, the ship. The show goes technically deep into products you care about. <laughs> the new, the old, the newish. So put on your gear, close up the hatch, and prepare to dive, dive. The birds, the ship. And now, here's John. Welcome to this edition of BSW Tech Dive. I am John Lynch, Director of Business Development here at Broadcast Supply Worldwide and BSWUSA.com. Our topic today is a brand new entry into the world of FM processing. It's called the XPN Enterprise, and it's a new entry from the folks at Orban who have been around since the 70s as far as doing processing for AM and FM radio stations. Our guest today on Tech Dive is the Vice President for Business Development for Orban and a very well-known engineer in his own right. His name is Mike Pappas. And Mike, we welcome you to the show and give us a little bit of the generation of how XPN Enterprise came about. Well, uh, thanks, John. So uh, a couple of years back, we uh, uh, were over at the Ross booth at the NAB show. Remember NAB shows when they used to actually have NAB shows? There you go. Um, <laughs> But uh, and they, they will should, again. Uh, yeah, and they will hopefully next year. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, but Ross showed a product, a Linux-based uh, product called uh, Softgear, and it uh, basically was a virtualized environment uh, running on uh, commercial off-the-shelf Dell blades. And um, we looked at this and said, this is an opportunity for us to. Uh, do high density processing uh, in a Linux environment, which of course is very reliable, uh, virtually unstoppable in terms of uh, uh, continuously running and, and being very, very reliable. And we had uh, some discussions with Ross and uh, uh, we decided that we'd go ahead and do a port. So we effectively ported an 8700 uh, onto their uh, software platform. And uh, they went out and found a customer, a launch customer, uh, that needed 600 channels of processing. That all? That's all. And they wanted it in a dual redundant uh, um, AYP uh, environment uh, with fault tolerant. And uh, from the time we started till the time the launch customer signed the initial PO was nine months. So from a, a standpoint of fast to implement and get up and running and uh, have a launch customer, uh, it was very, very quick. So that's that's kind of how we got to the point where we're at now. And uh, had the NAB show uh, ticked off uh, uh, next week, and we would have been showing it at the, at the booth along with Ross. So it's, uh, that's the quick overview of how we got started. But from a standpoint of, you know, is it a different way of thinking? Yes. Well, why does it make sense? Well, if you're in an environment where you've got, uh, you know, you're regional and you've got six FMs and, and you've got six different processors and you've got six streaming outputs and uh, you need to manage all of that and you don't want to do that with Iron uh, Enterprise, uh, XPAN Enterprise is a, a really great solution for you. And it supports all the, you know, a, uh, AOIP formats that everybody wants. So AS67, SMPTE 2110, Livewire Plus, uh, you know, it's kind of a Swiss army knife of AOIP. And then on the back side of it, uh, it's, it's one thing to do all that core processing. The question is, how do we get it out to the transmitter sites and how do we convert it into something that uh, an FM transmitter can uh, take like composite or uh, DMPX or something along those lines. And, and in order to uh, fulfill those requirements, we built a whole series of uh, high performance processing, uh, not processing, but high performance nodes that uh, take the output off the uh, uh, XPAN Enterprise and converts it into everything from composite, DMPX, micro MPX, uh, AES for uh, HD. Uh, we've got streaming outputs. Uh, it does Kantar and Nielsen watermarking for every output. Um, 
and we have uh, even some low bandwidth uh, last mile options for customers that don't happen to have uh, a lot of bandwidth to their transmitter sites. And we've got a way to ship uh, analog FM, HD1, 2, and 3 to a transmitter site in less than uh, 600 kilobits a second. So we've, we've tried to look at this from the standpoint of uh, how, do we, how do we fix all the bits and pieces that uh, uh, you're going to need to get it to be successful in an environment that may not be a, a giant nationwide broadcaster that has, you know, needs 600 channels of processing. But more along the lines of, uh, you know, we're in Casper, Wyoming, and we've got uh, six FMs on the air all running three HD channels. Well, we, we have a perfect solution for all of that with uh, XPN Enterprise. And the other thing is it's a 1RU blade, and it's made by Dell. So, you know, you've got uh, real commercial grade uh, uh, enterprise grade hardware here, and so it's running Linux. What you're saying is what used to be done for one station off the renowned 8700 and i believe that's like a three rack space you've now cut it down to one rack space and you're doing a bunch of stations all out of right. one box right so one are you can effectively handle uh 16 processing channels and those are full-blown 8700i processing so um you know it's not uh it has mx limiting it's got multi-path mitigation it, it's uh, stereo enhanced it it does everything, and uh, in a one RU box, and it's uh, and it's re very very reliable. Uh, running Linux is a um, a, a no brainer in terms of uh, are you on the air all the time kind of thing, and that for us was uh, incredibly important. You know, we we got a lot of feedback from uh, potential customers uh, who did not uh, who's in, in for uh, infosec information security department uh, did not want to deal with uh, any sort of windows environment so um, and the raw solution is is brilliant it's uh, fast to work uh, fast to implement and it's uh, it's supported uh, well by ross okay let's take a look at a typical customer who may be considering xpn enterprise versus let's say an 8600 si or an 8700 Where's the line of demarcation that says get two of these or get one of these kind of thing? Well, it somewhat depends on how many HD channels you're going to run. And so if you're, if you're simply doing, uh, you know, FM and HD1, uh, your foldover point's probably going to be about five stations. Uh, you'll be more cost effective doing it with uh, XPN Enterprise. Uh, if you're doing it with, um, you know, HD3 channels, uh, you've got three HDs going. Uh, the foldover point's probably faster. Uh, you're probably looking at three or four stations worth. Um, you know, if you want to support streaming, um, you know, you get all that for free with this system, effectively. Uh, not quite, but uh, you know, once 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 you've got the main processing done, then feeding your streams, feeding your HDs, watermarking everything independently, all. Uh, all gets done and it's highly flexible i kind of think of it as a, a giant lego set you can have these kind of pieces and those pieces and it's because we wanted maximum flexibility we didn't want to lock you into well you can only do you know x number of hds or you can only do y number of streams or um, you can only do this kind of uh, nielsen watermarking into these environments and 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 when we were putting this uh, system together we said you know we're going to make it so that we never have to say that you can't do it. And uh, for us, that's really important. You know, we want a solution that, that is applicable to, to virtually any environment that you can come up with and includes uh, uh, potential customers who may be in a situation where they have very low bandwidth uh, links to their transmitter sites. And we've got to get that to successfully go down a pipe that's relatively small. And, uh, and do it in a way that doesn't cause more problems than it fixes. Oh, and one other thing, because you've alluded to this in other programs that you and I have done, it solves an issue, particularly in other countries, where rack space is at a premium. Well, it certainly in, in a lot of environments in, uh, in Europe, uh, the 
the broadcaster is charged by how many uh, RU of rack space they use. Um, we ended up uh, at one RU because it was a very cost-effective Dell blade that had lots of horsepower in a one RU uh, slot. And if you were going to uh, do this kind of an exercise, you, you, you didn't want to go in there with needing six RU or something. You, you really wanted to get it into the smallest space you could. And, and, and we've been able to do that. And, and a lot of this is a direct result of our relationship with Ross. Um, and they're one of the biggest uh, Dell customers in the planet. So uh, we benefit from their uh, incredible buying power and uh, standardization on hardware. And uh, the, the idea that we've got commercial off the shelf uh, hardware built by Dell and that runs the backbone of this thing and it's all been put together and the porting was uh, done by Ross uh, means that a lot of the um, potential pitfalls were uh, already taken care of before we got to that point. Well, you brought up a point and I want to have you expand on it because, all right, where we are right now, supply chain issues are what we hear all around the world with uh, all kinds of vendors and all kinds of product. What about XPN availability, XPN enterprise availability? Well, so that's the other great part is uh, uh, Ross has got uh, a, a lot of muscle at Dell and uh, availability is, a, is we're available right now and we can ship quantity. And um, again, it doesn't make any sense to develop products that you can't ship and it doesn't make any sense to announce products that you can't ship. And... Um, you know, we've we maintain a very low profile on this project and product for uh, quite a while because, um, you know, we didn't want to promise the promise the world and deliver nothing. And uh, for us, it's uh, uh, people who uh, buy Orban know, you know, we we really deliver everything that we promise when we say we're going to deliver it. And, uh, you know, with this whole supply chain thing, um, started to get squirrely. Uh, we went out to our contract manufacturer for our regular big iron products. You know, the 8700Is, 8600Si's, uh, the AIM stuff, and said, buy two years worth of parts and put it on the shelf. And we'll, we'll cover all those costs up front because we don't want to be in a position where customers can't get product. Um, we just, you know, that, that, that doesn't do anybody any good. So the same thing with... Uh, uh, XPN Enterprise, uh, it's available now. Um, we're just coming up to speed on some of the uh, nodes uh, that get you into some of the uh, interfaces, but uh, from a deliverable standpoint, uh, we're, we're delivering it right now. That's great news for anybody who's in that particular marketplace. And like you alluded to, multiple FMs in a given market and multiple streams and HD channels. Yeah. One box solution, XPN Enterprise. Well, and the other thing also that I failed to mention here is it's got a, a dashboard interface. So uh, the, the guys that bought uh, 600 channels of this, we're, we're trying to man, manage 600 processors across a whole nation. And as you can imagine, that's, uh, it, it was, uh, it was a, a big headache. And uh, uh, with uh, Enterprise, it's uh, quite easy to... Uh, manage 600 processors and uh, and get them all to work. And and it, if you've got five or six stations and you've got two or three HDs, uh, you know that it's a handful to understand what's going on with your processing. And with Enterprise, it's a simple, easy to log into dashboard. Uh, in fact, we're using Ross's uh, dashboard, which they've developed with their Open Gear product and have been delivering for a decade. So again, it's uh, it's not anything that we've had to build. We've uh, we simply relied on uh, uh, all the work that Ross has done over the last ten years with Open Gear and used their dashboard and ported our uh, uh, user interface right to it. And it looks just like every user interface that you've ever seen from Orban. So we didn't go into this and change everything. You know, we didn't uh, 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 rework the UI just to rework the UI. It it looks like every processor that's had a UI since like uh, 8400s, and that's been, what, 25 years. So uh, from a familiar standpoint, uh, running this isn't going to be a huge uh, culture shock or relearning exercise or frustration. Additionally, uh, the customer that uh, 
that needed 600 channels had been doing a raft of processing on all kinds of Orban products from uh, 1101 cards to 8500s, 8600s, 8700s. And uh, they came to us with uh, a dozen or so presets from all those different uh, products and, and technology. And we were able to uh, take those presets and, and port them over to uh, uh, Enterprise for them successfully. And that saved them a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of work and effort. So uh, the, the system was really put together with uh, the idea of easy, flexible, uh, reliable Orban sound. Uh, uh, you know, we, we really looked hard and long at, at everything that uh, a broadcaster in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming would need to a broadcaster in Chicago, L.A., anywhere in between. XPN Enterprise or just XPNE for information. Give us a call. There's the number right above me, 800-426-8434, and talk with your favorite BSW sales representative. We'll also involve people like Mike Pappas because this is something that needs to be coordinated for your specific site and your specific number of channels that you'll be working with. XPN Enterprise from Orban. Mike, thanks for joining us. I'm John Lynch. Thank you for watching BSW Tech Dive. Turn out the light